Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And shout out to Dr. King. I got my Dr. King sweatshirt on, or one of my Dr. King sweatshirts on. Shout out to MLK. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you get familiar with some of his speeches, right? Not just the I Have a Dream speech. That's real popular. He had a lot more speeches. Um, he also wrote three books. Wrote three books. Um, Strive Toward Freedom, Why We Can't Wait, and Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community. There's been so many books written about him, biographical texts written about him. But one of my point is, I'm just bringing it up because... You know, we, we really don't know the extent. Most of us don't really understand the extent to the work this man put in and the work that he did for the community that, you know, a lot of us are still able to benefit from now to this day. But it goes way beyond the I have a dream speech, you know. But anyway, check out his work. All right. So look, one fourth plus one sixth, one fourth plus one sixth. Um, well, I ain't even introduced the lesson. This is Eureka Squared, grade five, module two, topic B, lesson number nine. Lesson number nine. This is the last lesson within topic B. The last lesson within topic B, then we're going to go into topic C. All right, now the title of this lesson is add, to add and subtract fractions with unrelated units. These are unrelated units because four is not a factor of six and six is not a multiple of four. So these are called unrelated units. All right, unrelated units. Four is not a factor of six because there's no whole number in the universe in the real number system that I can multiply by four and get six. I can multiply four by a decimal and get six, right? I can multiply four by 1.5 and get six or by three halves and get six, but it don't matter if I can multiply by a fraction or a decimal, that don't make it a factor. It's only a factor if you can multiply that number by another whole number, a whole number, no decimal, no fraction, no decimal, no fraction, right? If you can multiply by an integer, essentially, right? You know what I mean? So then, hold on a second. Something in my window. It's a little bird. It's all good. So anyway, um, so four is a four is not a factor of six because I can't multiply four by a whole number in order to get six. So anyway, add and subtract fractions with unrelated units by finding equivalent fractions numerically. We're not using area models. We're not doing a, a pictorial representation. That's cool sometimes, but for this lesson, we're not doing that, right? We need to know how to do both. We need to know how to draw the pictures and be able to visualize, but we also need to do be able to do it without the pictures sometimes. We need to be versatile, you know, diverse. We need to be able to switch up, switch up our, our flow and our approach sometimes. All right, so we'll start with one fourth plus one six. Now, I need common denominators. So I got to rename these fractions. I got to rename these fractions. So I got to think of a common denominator, which would be, I know one is 12, because 12 is a common multiple of both four and six. So you think to yourself, well, how do I change four into a six? Well, no, I meant to say, how do you change four into a 12? And how do you change six into a 12? Let's do something like this. Let's create a fraction plus another fraction. So we got the one times three and four times three. So if I multiply four by three, I get 12. But I can't just multiply the denominator by 12 by three. I got to multiply both numbers, the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom, all right? Now over here, I got one times two and six times two, right? One times two and six times two, right? So one times three is three, four times three is 12. So now I got three twelfths. So one fourth is equivalent to three twelfths. One fourth is equivalent to three twelfths. Why? Because three over three is just another representation of one. It's another way to write one. Whenever you got a fraction, we got the same number up top, there's the same number down bottom. That just equals one. So really you just multiply one fourth by one, even though we're using threes instead of just the number one, right? So we're changing the numbers in the fraction, but the value is the same. We're changing, that's, that's a fundamental concept in math that you gotta wrap your head around, right? The numbers are different, but the value is the same. One fourth is the same thing as three twelfths, right? It has the same value. Just like in ELA, right? English language arts, words have, synon words have synonyms. So they may be a totally different word, spelled totally different. One word might be short, one word might be long, but they mean the same thing though, right? Totally different words, but they mean the same thing. Same thing in math. Synonyms. One fourth is a synonym for three twelfths. They're equivalent. They're equivalent. All right. Now over here, two over two is the same thing as one. So now we got two over twelve. And now we can add how many twelfths we got all together. How many twelfths we got all together. All together we have five twelfths. And that's our answer. And that's how we do that. Let's do another one. 
eight ninths plus seven sixths. Once again, we deal with unrelated units, unrelated units, because nine is not a factor of six. Six is not a factor of nine. Of course, nine can't be because nine is bigger than six, but nine is not a multiple of six either, right? You know what I'm saying? So let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, so we got options. We got options. We could just um, decompose and make the nine and the six into 54s. We could do that if we wanted to. You want to make your, your, your fraction that small, each of your fractions that small, your unit fraction that small. So let's do that, right? This is one of our options. All right, so I do eight times six, and I do nine times six, and then I do seven times nine, and I do six times nine. Now, why did I do this, right? Because whenever I want to find common denominators, one of my options, and it's a lot of options, but one of my options is just to multiply the denominators together. Notice we didn't do that in the first example. We didn't do that in the first example, right? Because we didn't have to. And we didn't have to do it here either, but I'm just showing you another method. That's all I'm doing. In math, math, there's a lot of options. I repeat, in math, there are a lot of options. I repeat, in math, there are a lot of options. There is never going to be just one way to do a problem. Familiarize yourself with as many ways as possible. All right? So we can just multiply the 9 by 6. That's why this is right here. And at the same time, we can multiply the 6 by 9. That's why this is right here. So then we got 48, and we need to know our multiplication facts. Make sure you got your multiplication facts memorized. It's going to make this easy. If not, uh -huh, I don't know what to tell you. Then 7 times 9 is 63. 6 times 9 is 54. So how many 54ths do we have? How many pieces that are that small do we have all together? How many 54ths do we have? So we add the 48 and the 63. I would add, personally, mentally, I would add 40 plus 60. 40 plus 60, because the 4 and the 6 represent 40 and 60. So I would add 40 plus 60 and get 100. Then I would add 8 and 3 and get 11. And 100 plus 11 is 111. So this gives me 111 54ths. All right, which is an a improper fraction, right? Which would give me, if I wanted to convert it to a mixed number, two groups of 54 can fit into 111. Two groups of 54 can fit into 111 because 54 times 2 is 108. 108. So my big number is going to be a 2. If, my, if 2 times 54 is 108, the difference between 111 and 108 is 3. And then I got 54 down here. And I can, I can reduce this because 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 54 divided by 3 is 18. So this is 2 and 1 18th. If you wanted to go further than that. Going to further than that, 2 and 1 18th. All right. Um, what about the next one? Next one. Let's say four fifths minus two sevenths. Four fifths minus two sevenths. So four fifths minus two sevenths. So this is a good example of where the probably the most efficient thing to do is to just multiply the denominators, right? Because there's no common multiple, as these are unrelated units, there's no common multiple less than 35. And five times seven is 35. Up here, our common denominator could have been 18. We could have just multiplied this by 2, 2 over 2, 2 over 2, two instead of doing 6 over 6, because 2 over 2 is still equal to 1, and we could have multiplied this by 3 over 3. And our common denominator could have been 18. That could have been what we did, but that, that's an option. That's an option. You know, we don't, you know, like I said, in math, there are many options. In math, there are many options, right? And your job will be to decide what method you want to use. You got options. All right. So now we're going to do this. Minus this. So we we'll multiply 5 by 7. Multiply 5 by 7. So it's going to be 4 times 7 over 5 times 7. And then we'll multiply 7 by 5. 7 by 5. 7 by 5. So it's going to be 2 times 5 over 7 times 5. And look what we get. 28 over 35. Minus 10 over 35. And then we know how many 35ths we got by doing the actual subtraction. So 28 take away 10 is going to be 18 over 35. 18 35ths. Um, a little more than a half. A little bit over a half because 18 36ths would be exactly one half. All right. And as your denominator gets smaller, right, the denominator gets smaller, the fraction, get, the piece gets, the value gets bigger. The fraction, the piece gets bigger. All right, let's do one more. One more. Let's do one with three fractions, right? Do one with three fractions. All right, let's do one from the uh, the Ames Papyrus. The Ames Papyrus. Let's get into some um, 
some ancient Kemetic history, right? So the Ames Papyrus was basically like a math textbook that our ancestors in ancient Africa developed, you know, thousands of years ago, right? The Ames Papyrus. It, was, it talks about a, a, a particular word problem on the Ames Papyrus, like I said, which um, Papyrus is like a, a predecessor to paper, right? Um, that, you know, information was written on. And it was a, a bunch of word problems on it. And the word problem that this is connected to was how many loaves of, uh, how do you divide uh, 10 loaves of bread, no, nine loaves of bread between 10 people, nine loaves of bread between 10 people. And this is the solution. The solution is two thirds plus one fifth plus one thirtieth, right? So if we want to combine this all into one fraction, right? Into one fraction, we need common denominators. They're unrelated, right? Well, actually, they're not actually unrelated. These are actually, well, because it's three fractions, they're not all like two of them are not factors of 30. So three is a factor of 30 and five is a factor of 30, but three is not a factor of five. So this still falls into the category of unrelated units. It still will fall into that category. So what we can do is we can either, um, we got to decompose two thirds, right? We could decompose two thirds into thirtieths. We can decompose one fifth into thirtieths and leave the one thirtieth alone. So let's do, let me do this. Let's do this. Two times 10 over three times 10 plus boom, one times six over five times six plus, and then let me erase this right here because this is in our way. All right. And then we just got, actually it wouldn't have been. So I'm just doing one thirty. Let me write that again. 18 30 fifths right there for that example. All right. So look. Let me go down here with it. So two times 10 is 20, three times 10 is 30. One times six is six, five times six is 30. And then we got one thirtieth. So now all our denominators are the same. Our denominators are the same now. So now we can just add them up. 20 plus six is 26, 26 plus one is 27. We got 27 thirtieths. So that's how much bread each person would get if we divide nine loaves of bread between 10 people, right? And that should make sense because 10 times 27 thirtieths will be 270 over 30 or 270 thirtieths and 270 divided by 30 equals nine because 30 times nine equals 270. All right. And this is just an example with like with three fractions in it, you know. So, all right. So that's so this is when this is what we do when we have we're going to find equivalent fractions. You know what I want to do? I do want to do one more example, though. I want to do one more example. Right, because this this was interesting. This is something we got we got to think about, right? Right. I want to do one more example. Let me make some space. Let me create some space. And also make sure everybody subscribe to the All This Math YouTube channel, right? At All This Math, go on YouTube and subscribe. All right, because we got a lot of other video content. You know, you might have some, you know, brothers and sisters or cousins or whoever. You know, that needs some help too. Tell them about it. We got math for everybody, right? It's for everybody. All right. So now what if we had, let me see, like 7 fifteenths plus 8 sixteenths, right? Now, if we just know equivalent fractions and we understand equivalent fractions and what they are, and we have some of them memorized, we would know that 8 sixteenths is the same thing as one half, right? 8 sixteenths is the same thing as one half. Which means that because eight out of eight out of sixteen is half eight is half of sixteen, right? So that also means that any fraction that's also equal to one half is equal to eight sixteenths. So watch this. What if I did? What if I wanted to make this denominator or decompose this into thirtieths? It's fifteenths right now, but I want to make it into thirtieths. So I'm gonna do fifteen times two and seven times two, right? So that's gonna be. Let me see. And then the a sixteenths. Let's say a sixteenths. Let's just treat that like one half for right now. And then so now I got fourteen thirtieths, right? Plus one half, right? But I know a sixteenths is equivalent to one half. But then I say, okay, well, what if I'm a de what? What if I can decompose this into thirtieths? All right, watch what I do. Fourteen thirtieths plus fifteen thirtieths. I know I ain't show the work, but it's fifteen thirtieths because. 1 times 15, 2 times 15. 1 times 15, 2 times 15, right? 
I think that's kind of fly, right? The fact that 15 thirtieths is equivalent to 8 sixteenths. How do I know that? Because something called the transitive property. If they both equal to one half, if well, if this is equal to one half, and this is one half, then this has to, if this is equal to one half, then this is equal to this. That's just something like, that's, that's, that's like, that's higher level mathematical thinking right there, right? So now I can add up 30ths. And again, this is just an option. This is one way to do this problem. We don't got to do it this way, right? But it, it, I think it beats the alternative, one of the alternatives, which is just to multiply 15 by 16, which is going to give you a big number in the 200s. You know what I'm saying? You might not want to go that big in terms of like the numbers that you're using. So anyway, how many 30ths? 29. Because 14 plus 15 is 29. So this equals 29 30ths. All right? And that's lesson nine. That's lesson nine. All right? That's the last lesson within topic B in module two, grade five, Eureka squared. But definitely practice problems like this. Practice problems like this to develop your fluency. Develop your fluency. Develop your understanding of math. Develop your understanding of numbers. Right? We just need to understand numbers because ma math is a language. Just like you need to un we need to understand words. We need to understand syllables and letters and sentences. We need to understand numbers. Right? Just so we can be just more successful at life in general. Right? So don't like listen to the people that tell you that math is irrelevant. Don't listen to the people that tell you like you're never going to use this in life. Yes, you will. And the people that don't use it in life, I don't want to live that type of life. I'm going to just leave it like that, you know? So anyway, um, yeah, get some practice on this. Use this video as a guide, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.